Good morning. This is the chapter 12 review. Number one, Mrs. Miller wants to estimate the width of the steps in front of her house. Select the best benchmark for her to use. So if I'm measuring the width of my steps, you want to, normally steps are at least as wide as a doorway. So measuring with my fingertip, that would take an unreal amount of time. So that one is not reasonable. The thickness of a dime is about a millimeter. So super, super thin. It's even smaller than a fingertip. So that one is not reasonable. Um, I don't think it would take her 20 minutes to walk across the width of her steps. So that one is not reasonable. So that means the only reasonable estimate or benchmark is the width of a license plate. Remember, a license plate is like the width of a piece of paper, pretty close to it. All right, number two, Franco played computer chess for three hours. Leon played computer chess for 150 minutes. Compare the time spent playing computer chess. Complete the sentence. So in order to do this, really we're comparing three hours compared to 150 minutes. And I always think it's easier to go from a bigger unit to a smaller unit because we multiply. So I'm going to turn this one into minutes by multiplying by 60 since there are 60 minutes in one hour. Six times three is 18 and we have 10 groups of six. So that would be 180 minutes, which is larger than 150 minutes. So to complete this sentence, Franco played for blank longer than Leon. So now we need to figure out how much longer they played. So we can do Franco's time of 180, subtract Leon's time of 150, and we get 30 minutes. So he, we could say Franco played for 30 minutes longer than Leon. Okay, next one, select the measures that are equal. Mark all that apply. Well, I will tell you on this, you're gonna have one foot, one yards, and one inches. So since the only one we have for yards is 15 yards, that's gonna be our basic starting point. So 15 yards, if I wanna turn that into feet, I'm gonna multiply by three because there are three feet in a yard. And when I do that, I get 45 feet. So 15 yards, 45 feet, and now I need to turn it into inches. So to do that, I have 45 feet, and I'm going to multiply it by 12 because there are 12 inches in a foot. So we can do our little turtle head method. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1 is 9. Draw a collar, lay an egg. 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times 4 is 4. And when I add those together, I get 540 inches, which is also one of our options. All right, Jackie made, a, made six quarts of lemonade. Jackie says she made three pints of lemonade. Explain her error. Well, we know that two pints equals one quart. So really, she should have six times two is 12 pints. It says to explain her error. Well, I can see that when she got three, she divided by two instead of multiplying. So she divided instead of multiplying. And this is then find the correct number of pints. Well, we did that earlier. So there are 12 pints. All right, next question. We are making a line plus as Josh practices gymnastic each day after school. The data shows the lengths of time that Josh practiced gymnastics for two weeks. So here's our data. And we are going to first make a tally chart. So we have one fourth halves, three fourths, one. So when I put these in order, I have one half, or sorry, one fourth, and then one half, and then three fourths, and then one. Those are my um, different increments of time in order. Now I'm going to start tallying, tallying them. So I'm going to cross them out as I get them done so I don't accidentally forget one or do one twice. 
So I'm just putting tallies on each one. Okay, now it says I want to make a line plot. So when I label my graph, I'm going to use the same labels from here. So I have one fourth, one half, three fourths, and one. One fourth gets two X's because there's two tallies. One half gets one, three fourths gets three, and one gets four. Now the last thing I need is every graph needs a title. So I can look at the title here and it is time practicing gymnastics. And since we're making a line plot, we also want to tell um, what these X's mean. So I'm going to put in parentheses in hours. Now explain how you use the tally table to label the numbers and plot the X's. The tally table, once we've done that, tells me the labels for my line plot and how many X's to draw. for each data point. Okay, the next one, what is the difference between the longest time and the shortest time? So when it just wants to know the difference in time, we're not counting the X's. We're looking at the time slot. So the longest time was one, and the shortest time was one fourth. So when I do that, I know that one is four fourths. So four fourths minus one fourth equals three fourths. So the difference in time between the shortest and longest was three fourths of an hour. Right, next one. Select the correct word to complete the sentence. Juan brings a water bottle with him to practice. A full water bottle holds how much? Well, we know when we're talking about volume, we can automatically take out meters because those are measuring length. So now we have a liter or 10 milliliters. Now remember with milliliters, um, if we think back to our benchmark, the milliliter is about the size of one fingernail, like the distance right here between your fingernail. So it's really super tiny. So if I have 10 of those, that's not going to be a very full water bottle. So the most reasonable um, estimate would be a liter of water. Remember, a liter is about um, a water bottle. Okay, number seven, write the symbol that compares the weights correctly. 128 ounces into pounds, or com compared to eight pounds. So I'm going to turn my pounds into ounces by multiplying by 16. So when I do that math, 16 times eight, because there's 16 ounces in one pound, eight times six is 48, eight times one is eight, plus four is 12, so that is 128 ounces. So that tells me that they are equal. 8,000 pounds compared to three tons. I know that a ton is 2,000 pounds. So two times three is six, two times three, th or three times 2,000 would be 6,000 pounds. So 8,000 pounds is greater. Number eight, Dwayne bought five yards of wrap paper. How many inches did he buy? So we have five yards. We want to turn it into inches. We can do that by multiplying by 36 because there are 36 inches in one yard. Five times six is 30. Five times three is 15 plus three is 18. So that gives us 180 inches. Number nine, a sack of potatoes weighs 14 pounds, nine ounces. So here's the sack of potatoes. After Wendy makes a potato salad for a, pic for a picnic, the sack weighs nine pounds, 14 ounces. What is the weight of Wendy's potatoes used for the potato salad? So what we are doing is we have lined up, there's 14 pounds, nine ounces. There's nine pounds, 14 ounces. And now we need to do some subtraction. Now I can't take 14 ounces away from nine ounces. So when I borrow one of these pounds, I'm actually adding 16 ounces. 
So that means there's a total right here of 25 ounces minus 14 ounces is 11 ounces. 13 minus 9 is 4. So that means my final answer is 4 pounds and 11 ounces. Okay, next one. Sabita made this table to show two customer units of liquid volume. So we're doing liquid volume. That means we're thinking of gallon land. Okay, so think about the land of gallon. In the land of gallon, there were four queens. And each queen had two prince or princesses. And each prince or princess had two cups. Okay, so list the number of pairs for each table. Then describe the relationship between the pairs. So the number of pairs are one, two, two, four, three, six, four, eight, and five, ten. They're just the numbers that go together. Now the next section, it says to describe the, the relationship. So we could say the first column is half of the second column. Or we could say the second column is two times as large as the first column. Then it says label the column of the tables, explain your answer. So now we have to come up here and we have to label this. We have to figure out what these are. Well, if I look at my land of gallon, I want to find something that has two. And there's a couple options here. Okay, so I could see that one quart is made of two pints. I could also see that one pint is made of two cups. Either one of those would work. So we've done that. Now it says explain your answer. To explain, then we could say, I know that two pints make one quart. All right, number 11. The table shows the distances some students swam in miles. Complete the line plot to show the data. So we need to figure out what our label our first, we have one, two, three, four, five different labels. And we have one eighth, two eighths, we have three eighths, four eighths, and it looks like five eighths. So I'm going to go ahead and make a little tally table over here just to help me out. One eighth, two eighths, three eighths, three eighths, five eighths, three eighths, two eighths. 4 eighths, 3 eighths, 1 eighth, 4 eighths, and 4 eighths. So I know what my labels are now going to be there. 1 eighth, 2 eighths, 3 eighths, 4 eighths, and 5 eighths. I know that 1 eighth gets 2 x's, 2 eighths gets 2 x's, 3 eighths gets 4 x's, 4 eighths gets 3 x's and 5 eighths gets 1 x. Now it says, what is the difference between the longest distance and the shortest distance? Well, these are the distances. So we have 5 eighths subtract 1 eighth equals 4 eighths or 1 half. Okay, we're going to go ahead and keep going. And now we are on number 12. An elephant living in a wildlife park weighs 4 tons. How many pounds? So we're going to turn tons into pounds by multiplying by 2,000 because there are 2,000 pounds in one ton. Basic fact, 4 times 2 is 8, and we are in the thousands, so 8,000 pounds. Katya bought two melons. She says the difference in mass between the melons is 5,000 grams. Which two melons did she buy? So the biggest mistake I see on this is we see 5,000 grams, we automatically guess 5,000. But it says the difference in mass. That means when I subtract these two numbers, 
they're gonna give me a total of 5,000 grams. So first I'm gonna go ahead and turn all these into grams. So that's 8,000 grams, 5,000 grams, 3,000 grams, 2,000 grams, and 1,000 grams. Now I'm gonna figure out which ones I can subtract to equal 5,000. Well, I know that I can't subtract anything from two to get 5,000. 1,000 wouldn't work on any of these. 5,000 wouldn't work because it has to equal 5,000 when I subtract them. So that means if I take eight minus three, that is five. So that means if I subtract the watermelon, or take the watermelon and then subtract the honeydew melon from that, 8,000 minus 3,000 is 5,000. Okay, the next one, write the equivalent measurements in each column. Three meters. So this is where we're going to want to use our chart. So we have King, Henry, doesn't, usually, drink, chocolate, milk. So we have King, Henry, doesn't, usually, drink, chocolate, milk. If I want to find something that's equal to three meters... If I have a three right here, I want to see, first of all, how many millimeters I will have. So that would be 30, 300, 3,000. This would be 0 0.3 or 3 tenths, 3 hundredths, and 3 thousandths. So I filled that out so I can check for meters. So 3,000 millimeters is on my chart, so I can put that in here. Thirty-five meters is not on my chart. Three hundred one thousandths. So that would be three tenths of a meter would not be equal to meters. Three hundred centimeters. That one is on my chart, so I can put that on here. Anything that's in meters, it can't be in the same box. So I know those ones are out. And this is 35, so that won't match. Meters are not going to match. So we have 30 centimeters. Well, I have 300 centimeters, so that one can't match. 30 decimeters. If I look at my decimeters, there's 30. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my 35 centimeters. So if I have 35 here, then this would be 350, this would be 3 and 5 tenths, this would be 35 hundredths, 35 thousandths, 35 ten thousandths, 35 millionths. So now I can look at these 35 hundredths of a meter. Yes, that is correct just written in decimal form. 300 thousandths of a meter, no. Meters are already out, we've already got meters. 350 millimeters, that one works. 30 centimeters, nope, because we started with 35. And 35 hundredths of a meter written as decimal, absolutely. Okay, now the rest should fit in the last box, but I always want to double check just in case I made a mistake somewhere else. So if I have 300 millimeters, then this would be 30, this would be 3, this would be 3 tenths, 3 hundredths, 3 thousandths, and 3 ten thousandths. So when I look at this 300 thousandths of a meter, if I simplify that, that ends up being 3 tenths. So, yes, that is correct. So we have 300 one thousandths of a meter. 3 tenths here. If I just put these zeros on, that equals the same amount. So, yes, that works. And then 30 centimeters, yes, that works. All right, number 15. Cheryl is making a mixed fruit drink for a party. 
She mixes seven pints each. This is a clue right here, each of apple juice and cranberry juice. That means seven pints of apple juice plus seven pints of cranberry juice. How many fluid ounces did she make? So first we need to figure out how many pints she made all together. So when I add those together, I get 14 pints. And now I need to turn those pints into ounces. Well, I know that one cup is eight ounces and there are two cups in one pint. So that means there are 16 ounces in one pint. Six times four is 24. Six times two is six plus two is eight. Add my zero. One times four is four. One times one is one. Four plus zero is four. Eight plus four is 12. One plus one is two. So that means we have 224 ounces. Hamid's soccer game will start at 11 o'clock, but the players must arrive at the field three quarters of an hour early to warm up. Okay, so I'm going to highly suggest you draw a timeline on this problem. His game starts at 11 o'clock a.m. They have to arrive three quarters of an hour early. Remember, one quarter of an hour is 15 minutes, so... That means they have to arrive 45 minutes early, which would be 10.15 a.m. The game must end by 1.15. So here's where the game ends at 1.15 p.m. It says, Hamid says he has to be at the field at 9.45. Is he correct? No. He needs to be at the field... at 10.15 a.m. Now it says the park closes at 6.30. There is a 15 minute break between each game at the park and each game takes the same amount of time as Hamid's game. So we know that game one went from 11 o'clock a.m. to 1.15 p.m. And then there is a break that is 15 minutes. So we're going to go from 1.15 to 1.30 p.m. for a break. We need to figure out how long his game is so we can figure out how many more games we can do. So if I do my hour, so one hour from 11 o'clock would be 12 o'clock. And then I can do another hour. That's 1 o'clock. And then I have 15 minutes. So that means each game is one or sorry, two hours and 15 minutes. Okay. Now, game two, we have to figure out if it starts at 1.30. So game two starts at 1.30 and we go two hours and 15 minutes. So one hour, two hours. That would be... 2.30, 3.30, and then 15 minutes would be 3.45. So we are going from 1.30 p.m. until 3.45 p.m. And that means the second break is from 3.45 p.m. until 4 o'clock p.m. And then, so this is the break... It means we're starting the next game at 4 o'clock. We go two hours. So 4 o'clock, that would be 5 p.m., and this would be 6 p.m. And then we have to go 15 minutes, so that means we would end at 6.15 p.m. So game 3 goes from 4 o'clock p.m. till 6.15 p.m. And clearly there's not enough time for another break or another game because the park closes at 6.30. So the question is asking how many more games can be played before the park closes? So altogether we have three games, but we already played one game. So when it says how many more, there are two more games. All right, for number 17A through 17E, select yes or no to tell whether the measurements are equivalent. Now, all of these are using our chart. So, let me just get a piece of paper and we will draw that out.
Okay. So we have King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. So these are our kilometers, hectometers, deca, these are our units, deci, centi, milli. Now, remember if we're going down the staircase, our decimal is moving to the right and we are multiplying by 10. If we're going up the staircase, we're going from a small unit to a big unit, we are dividing by 10. Our decimal is moving to the left. So if I have 7,000 grams, grams would be our unit. So if I have 7,000 right here and I want to figure out what seven or kilograms would be, I'm going up the staircase. So this would be 700. My decimal is just moving one to the left. So this would be 70. This would be seven. So yes, 7,000 kilograms or grams is the same thing as seven grams. Okay, so now let me erase this one. And now we're going to go from 200 milliliters to liters. So I'm going up the staircase again. So my decimal is moving to the right. So that's 200 and then 20 and then 2 and then this would be 0 and 2 tenths. So no, that one does not work because this would be 2 tenths of a liter. 6 grams into 6 kilograms or 6 grams is equal to 6,000 kilograms. So let's see. If I have 6 grams I'm going up the staircase and this would be six tenths of a gram, six hundredths of a gram, six thousandths of a gram. So that means no, this one does not work. They moved in the opposite direction. So this would actually be six thousandths of a gram. So no, that would not work. Okay, next one, five liters and we want to go to milliliters. So if we're right here at our units, that's five. Going down the staircase, that's 50, 500, 5,000. So yes, that does, oh, my pencil didn't work. That does make 5,000 milliliters. So yes, that one works. And then we're checking two milliliters into liters. So if we have two here and we're going up the staircase, we're moving the decimal to the left, we're dividing. So two, and this would be two tenths, two hundredths, two thousandths. And so no, this one would not work. They moved in the wrong direction. That should be two thousandths. All right, next question says, draw lines to match equivalent time intervals. Well, half an hour is um, 30 minutes. So, so we know that one hour equals 60 minutes. So we don't have 30 minutes. So what I'm going to need to do is turn it into seconds because obviously the minutes do not work. So if I have half an hour, that is 30 minutes. If I want to go to seconds, I'm going to multiply it by 60 because there are 60 seconds in a minute. So 6 times 3 is 18, and then we have two zeros to put back in, so that's 1,800 seconds. So that one matches here. Well, if we know 1 hour is 60 minutes, if I multiply that by 2, 60 minutes times 2 is basic fact 12, 120 minutes. That one also does not have a match, so we're going to do... 120 times 60, so 6 times 12 is 72, we have two zeros there, so 7200 seconds. So we're going to match that all the way over. Okay, 3 hours, 3 times 60, 6 times 3 is 18, add my zero, 180 minutes. 8 hours times 60, so 6 times 8 is 48, add my 0, so 480 minutes. And then 72 hours, now I've got days here, so there's no more minutes that I can change it to, but I know that there are 24 hours in one day. 
So I can do 24 times 3 and see if that matches up. So 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1 is 7. So 72 hours does match up to 3 days. All right, Anya arrived at the library on Saturday morning at 11.10. So if I look at this, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's 12 sections, which means each one of these is 5 minutes. So that means she arrived here at 11.10. She left the library one hour and 20 minutes later. So if I go one hour later, that's going to put me at 12.10. That's one hour. And then if I go another 20 minutes, 5, 10, 15, 20, that's going to put me at 12.30 p.m. Okay, number 20. The labels show patterns for some units of measurement. Write the correct labels in each table. Well, I'm going to start off with this one because I know that there are, well, the only one we've talked about that there's a seven involved is there are seven days in one week. Now I have three of something in one something. Well, I know that there are three feet in one yard. And now we have four and one. There are four cups in one quart. An Olympic swimming pool is 25 meters wide. How many decimeters is that pool? So I'm going to go back to my chart here erase this last problem. So if I had 25 meters, I want to know how many decimeters that is. So I'm going down the staircase, which means I multiply by 10. So that's 250. So that would mean I would have a total of 250 decimeters wide. Last problem, number 22. Frankie is practicing for a five kilometer race. His normal time is 31 minutes, 21 seconds. Yesterday, it only took him 29 minutes, 38 seconds. How much faster was that? So how much faster means we're finding the difference. So before I had 31 minutes, 21 seconds. Now I went to 29 minutes, 38 seconds. Now, this is a subtraction problem, but you have to remember when we are subtracting, we can't take 38 seconds away from 21. So I have to borrow one minute. But when I borrow one minute, I'm actually borrowing 60 seconds because 60 seconds is a minute. So altogether, this equals 81 seconds minus 38. So I'm going to go ahead and borrow. So that's 11 minus 8 is 3. 7 minus 3 is 4. So 43 seconds. 30 minus 29 is 1 minute. So that means I went 1 minute and 43 seconds faster. That is our test review. Um, please make sure you practice your measurements and um, good luck on your test. Have a good day.